Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And recently, we got a massive set of upcoming class changes announced just days before the official release of patch 10.05. This massive list of updates seeks to buff the viability of many of our favorite playstyles, especially those few which found themselves struggling to find popularity when it comes to getting into groups for endgame content while also pulling back on a few certain dominant classes which found themselves overperforming above the rest. This set of updates will include PvE changes, affecting how our classes perform in content like dungeons and raids, as well as PvP specific adjustments which affect you in player versus player content like war mode, battlegrounds and arenas. In today's video, I wanted to go over all of the significant changes coming to the future build of Dragonflight. But right before that, most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you are mine, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you're looking to get regular class and content updates for all the future Dragonflight builds. First, I want to go over the PvE changes, and then we'll cover the PvP specific adjustments. Starting out, we have new updates for the class of Druid. The newest Balanced Druid talent of Cosmic Rapidity is being adjusted to work more efficiently with shooting star procs, as well as minor adjustments to Lunar Eclipse, which overall will result in damage gains for Balanced Druids. Restoration Druid so far has been a dominant force in Mythic Plus content, performing far above most other healers. This set of changes focuses on slowing down their lead in dungeons, with minimal impact when it comes to healing in raids. Verdancy Blooming Effect has been reduced, along with the Adaptive Swarm effectiveness as well. The class of Mage is also set to receive a handful of changes in this build. Both the spec of Fire and Frost are seeing an overall damage tuning, increasing their effectiveness by 5%. This change isn't meant to affect either playstyle, but instead helps narrow the gap between Frost, Fire, and the more popular spec of Arcane Mage in endgame content. We also see even more improvements on the horizon for the healing Discipline Priests. With tuning, which helps increase the base value of Flash Hill Renew and Power Word Radiance to help them better counter bursts of group wide damage commonly seen in dungeon content. We also see buff to the passive effect of Sins of Many, which greatly increases their damage output, bolstering Atonement healing value in the process. This change could also lead to an increased popularity of more aggressive priest builds which embrace the shadow play style of discipline going forward. Next, we have the class of Rogue. Outlaw Rogue's survivability in high-end content has proven to be a little bit too potent. Their defensive value is being reduced a little, though ever so slightly. The specs should still feel very sturdy and should continue to evade death when it comes to high-end content. The class of Shaman is seeing a fairly major overhaul in this new update with significant buffs to Healing Surge, increasing either group or personal survivability, as well as a slight totem buff specifically for Mana Spring and the Totemic Surge talent. Elemental is seeing big damage buffs, which should make him more effective in AoE content like Mythic Plus Dungeons, with abilities like Flame Shock, Chain Lightning, Lava Beam and Earthquake seeing a 10% improvement. Restoration Shamans are also seeing damage buffs as well specifically when it comes to their AoE performance, with the talent of Acid Rain bolstered by 120%. The class of Warlock only sees a handful of adjustments, mostly to the passive talent of Harvester of Souls for the spec of Affliction, increasing its passive output by 25%. Demonology sees buffs to its talent of Reign of Tyranny, which increases the performance output of your Demonic Tyrant for every demon present during its initial summoning, which helps adjust this talent's performance slightly in pure single target encounters. Next, we have the class of Warrior, where we see massive damage gains for both the specs of Arms and the spec of Fury. Arms Warrior's damage has fallen significantly behind when it comes to dungeon content and AoE raid encounters. Therefore, their buffs are focused on increasing their performance against large groups of enemies. Fury Warrior has fallen off all across the board since the launch of Season 1 of Dragonflight, 
their buffs help increase the output of their most basic abilities from Rage and Blow, Execute, Rampage, Bloodthirst, and Annihilator, with many of these effects seen anywhere between a 5, 10, and a 15% increase to their overall effectiveness. And while the specs of Arms and Fury are set to receive some buffs, we do see some nerfs to the overall sturdiness of the Protection Warrior, with changes to the overall block value, through reductions to the talents of Brace for Impact and Shield Spec as well as decreases to Brutal Vitality, which empowers Ignore Pain's mitigation to be more effective. Next, we see a series of class adjustments focused primarily on PvP content, with all of these changes taking effect inside of War Mode, Battlegrounds, or Arenas. The pacing of matches in Dragonflight is seeing a major shakeup, with this new update focused on slowing down PvP gameplay slightly allowing for more room where players can adequately react to incoming damage and take appropriate actions. So far, Dragonflight has tried to balance its pace for PvP matches and has been avoiding the slow, grueling 20-minute long games you might have experienced during the expansion of Battle for Azeroth. But at the same time, Dragonflight doesn't want matches to be too short either, like we had during the expansion of Shadowlands, fueled by a very bursty meta where games could end quickly, sometimes in just 20 seconds. This update will reduce the primary stats provided by the PvP Trinket Set Bonus, decreasing class's overall damage output, and increasing the stamina it provides by 35%, which gives more leeway when trying to respond to PvP damage accordingly. The Casa Death Knight sees its defensives adjusted for PvP, reducing their power as the anti-magic counterclass but we do see buffs to the Death Strike healing, which could make him more effective against physical damage, which is usually their main weakness. Unholy Death Knight sees reductions to its passive damage output of diseases, and loses some pressure from the PvP talent of Necrotic Wound as well. Feral and Restoration Druids are seeing massive cutbacks in this recent build, with main sources of Feral Druid damage, abilities like Rake, Rip, Feral Frenzy and Ferocious Bites reduced by up to 18% within PvP. The survivability of Feral and Restor is also seeing reductions as well, with Feral Frenzy Emergency Healing being further reduced for both of these playstyles. And while Feral and Resto are seeing nerfs, Balanced Druids are seeing some PvP buffs instead, with these recent changes increasing their baseline ability damage, with buffs to Wrath, Starfire, Star Surge, as well as the talent of New Moon. But their tier set bonuses are also being adjusted to be a little bit less effective in PvP. Balanced Druids gain a lot of power from acquiring their tier sets during the first season of Dragonflight, so this change allows them to be a little bit more effective up front while still gaining value from the tier set bonuses instead of being solely reliant on gear to deal any significant PvP damage. Then we have even more updates to the newest edition of the Evoker. As the name suggests, the Devastation Evoker's burst damage so far has been fairly devastating. This build seeks to pull back on the burst damage of the Evoker class while bolstering their passive output to help make up the difference. The Preservation Healing Evoker PvP talent of Dream Projection has also been adjusted. This effect now comes with a small mana cost and can be removed by any player dispels within PvP. Hunters are also seeing small PvP adjustments as well, mainly to improve the pet's survivability when using the defensive skill of Roar of Sacrifice. The spec of Arcane Mage is set to receive some significant adjustments specifically to the output of the Arcane Barrage ability. Arcane Barrage can be supercharged through a series of talents, most of which simply increase its overall output. Arcane Bombardment makes it extremely effective at finishing off targets fighting themselves critically wounded. Arcane Bombardment has proven to be a little bit too potent, and its effective stopping power is said to receive a nerf in this upcoming build. Mistweaver Monks are said to receive a bit of a leg up when it comes to PvP tuning, by increasing their mana regeneration slightly while increasing the healing value of Enveloping Mist. Chrysalis regains its original 45 second cooldown reduction of Life Cocoon, reverted from its original 30 second cooldown on PTR. 
Next, we see a massive set of class changes directed at Retribution and the Holy Paladin playstyles, where we see buffs to defensives like Divine Protection to help this talent gain stronger competitive value within PvP, as well as buffs to Flash of Light, which helps increase the survivability of Paladins even further. From there, we see a series of nerfs and adjustments, starting with the spec of Holy Paladin. So far, Holy has seen big burst value from the talent of Reckoning, which helps increase the damage of their judgment significantly, resulting in large contribution to group's burst damage within PvP. Reckoning is going to take much longer to build for both Red and Holy Paladins, with Holy seeing a reduced value of judgment damage going forward. Though Holy does see an increase to overall throughput, primarily when it comes to spells like Holy Light and Holy Shock Healing. Retribution Paladin sees large nerfs to its burst output, with spells like Final Reckoning, Radiant Decree, and their tiers and bonuses reduced significantly. With all these changes set to make Paladin's burst a lot less terrifying while bringing up their sustained damage, with the main goal of leaving Retribution in a lot more of a healthier state. Abilities like Consecration, Exorcism, Tempo's Verdict, and Crusader Strike are seeing up to an 80% overall damage increase, which helps increase Red's effectiveness outside of the Wing's cooldown window. The class of Shaman is also set to receive some significant changes. All Shaman specs see a reduction to the PvP talent of Unleash Shield. When unleashing your Earth Shield, you will notice that the root effect has a much shorter duration and can now break to damage instead of reliably rooting your target in place. Restoration Shamans take a hit to their mana with reductions to Water Shield, and we see a loss to their burst damage when running the talent of Stormkeeper. Elemental Shamans are seeing massive burst reductions with tuning which helps bring down the power of the tier set bonus as well as the talent of Primordial Surge. And finally, we see further increases to the Fury Warrior within PvP. Recently, Fury has been falling behind other melee classes, so we are seeing increases to the anti-healing effect of Slaughterhouse, along with some damage buffs to help them better establish pressure within PvP. And for now, that's going to be the full list of class changes that have been recently added to the current build of Patch 1005, available for testing over on the PTR. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video, and hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single live stream and video, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or discuss with the other members of the community what do you think about the future upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.